This video is sponsored by bookmark.com. Click the link in the description to get your website started today. Hey friend, Brandon here. If you didn't know, Google accidentally leaked the Google 3 XA and XL, 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 I don't, how do you pronounce that? <laughs> Anyways, they leaked this mid-range version of the Google Pixel 3 and 3 XL on their website. And they found within some of the code for apps, code names, Flame for the 4 XL, and then Coral for 4. And then even John Prosser from Front Pixel Tech had an intern for Google leak some marketing documents to him. By the way, share some leaky love, mm, nope, <laughs> that's not it. <laughs> By the way, share some of the leaks with me as well. You know, share them with Brandon. <laughs> There's an email address and you can contact me over wire. Just saying. Anyways, with all of that said, that just means that the Google Pixel 4 and 4XL is coming soon. Well, probably in October. So after using the Google Pixel 3 and 3XL for the past six months, I have some thoughts about what I'd like to see next in the Google Pixel 4 and 4XL. By the way, there's a long-term review coming out for this phone, so make sure you hit that bell icon. So as a Google Pixel fan, let's talk about that. Here are 10 things that I'd like to see in the Google Pixel 4 and 4XL. So the first thing I'd like to see is eight gigabytes of RAM. If you didn't know, there's been a lot of issues in regards to stuttering and things with RAM management. There's only four gigabytes of RAM in the, the Google Pixel 3 and 3 XL. And there are rumors out there saying that the Google Pixel 4 and 4 XL will have six gigabytes of RAM, which is definitely an upgrade, but it would be nice to have eight gigabytes of RAM. So that's what I'd like to see. I don't wanna experience the aggressive app closures, issues with photos and video not saving, and then stuttering and things like that. Just no thanks, Google. This is your phone, do it right. The second thing I'd like to see is improved video quality. So hear me out, I love the Google Pixel 3 and 3 XL for photos. I actually have a video about it up here. There's actually two videos, so check them out. Something I'm really proud of. But there's a difference between a camera's photo quality and a camera's video quality. And the Pixel 3 has amazing photo quality, but their video quality is lacking. For some odd reason, Google does not allow you to have the ability to change the frame rate of your videos. I film everything here on 24 frames per second and it gives a little bit more of that cinematic look, but it's locked in at 30 frames per second on your phone. So why don't I have choice? This is Android, I should have choice, right? On top of that, it only goes up to 120 frames per second at 1080p and it doesn't even go 60 frames per second at 4K. What's up with that? I mean, you can use a third party app and unlock that feature, but that's just a little odd, right? The stock camera app dumbs everything down in terms of slow motion by saying it's half speed or a quarter speed as opposed to the actual frame rates. And that really just points out that they're trying to make it really consumer friendly and easy to understand, which brings me to this other desire for the video camera, a pro mode. You have that on phones like the Samsung Galaxy S10 and 10 Plus. It's a really nice feature for those of you who understand things like shutter speed, ISO, frame rate, etc., etc. And I like having that specific control. And if you want to have an amazing camera, something that stands out above every other phone that's out there, you need to stand out more than just photos, but also video. Number three is improved audio recording. When this phone launched, it sounded like hot garbage. They had like a noise gate on it and it just made it sound like an, a bad MP3 from back in the day. It was just awful. They had no low end and they had no high end. It just sounded like a, a phone, which is not good. <laughs> So this is what the front facing camera looks like on the Pixel 3 with the white stone dome glass installed. And you can still do the wide angle selfie and everything. Zoom in more, not flattering. After some updates, it definitely sounds better than before. And this is what the microphone sounds like as of April of 2019. But it's still lacking. Why? Well, it doesn't have as good of a stereo recording like the Galaxy S10 and 10 Plus or even the iPhone XS. So Google, make this phone sound good from the start and give us stereo recording. Even uh, check out that HTC thing where you can kind of like zoom in and it'll target the sound from that area. I 
haven't actually experienced that. If you have experienced that, go ahead and leave me a comment down below and share your experience with that. But the technology seems very interesting. So if they had something like that, that'd be pretty cool. Oh, number four might be a little interesting. Uh, improved speaker quality. Now the speaker quality on the 3XL is quite good, but it's a bit muffly. It's kind of the equivalent of sounding like you're in a bowl, like you're shooting a speaker into a bowl. So it has this weird resonance to it. I'm a sound engineer, so I notice these things a bit more. So admittedly, it might bother me more than others. There's an interesting thing going on with the 3XL speakers where it's not actually lining up with the speaker hole. And that means that it is shooting kind of like through a tube or like a tunnel, so to speak, which gives that honky sound. Despite that, it is quite full sounding, but it lacks a little bit of that high end sound or clarity that you may get from a Pixel 3. Unfortunately, the Pixel 3 doesn't have the full sound, so you kind of have a trade-off. So I guess uh, at least line up the speakers with the speaker holes, Google. <laughs> That seems like a really obvious thing to do. And along with that is just the need for the speakers to get louder. It's definitely plenty loud for most situations, but there's definitely been quite a few instances where I wish it could go just a little bit louder. The Galaxy S10 speakers can get super loud, but in terms of the fullness, surprisingly, it goes to the Google Pixel 3 XL. But clarity and loudness for sure, the Galaxy S10 Plus. For me, I really do lean on the speakers quite a bit when I'm around the house. I listen to podcasts all the time, so it's when I'm cooking or when I'm brushing my teeth and things like that. So having a louder volume is really helpful in those situations. Ooh, this might be an interesting. Number five, I really wanna keep this fingerprint scanner on the back. Recent leaks from uh, John Prosser have pointed out that there's probably, almost certainly, going to be an in-display fingerprint reader. And for me, I'm just not the biggest fan of them. They're slow, they're not really secure, and I feel like it's a step back. Now keep in mind that the video that was sent to John Prosser is just a marketing video. It's not the actual design of the phone, but it's clear that they're going to market the in-display fingerprint scanner. If we're going to have an in-display fingerprint scanner, have it on the back too. Why can't we have both? Plus, I just love this whole menu swipe down feature. It's just so helpful. I miss it on the Galaxy S10 so much. Number six is a Face ID equivalent. There's definitely some code within Android Q that indicates some support for a more robust face unlock feature. And that means it may be possible to see it uh, in a feature pixel line. Now, if you've actually used Face ID, not just seen it in some videos or seen other people use it, but you have personally used it, you'll know that Face ID is actually quite nice and secure. It's definitely not perfect by any means, especially if you're like laying down or you have it laying on your desk, but there's a lot of really amazing things that come with it. Say you open up a banking app, and as it's loading, as it's pulling up, it scans your face, it authorizes it, and the app pulls up without you having to authenticate it because your face is authenticating it. That is a seamless experience. It's almost like you don't even have a password set up, which is really nice. Some of you may be thinking, but what about purchases and things where I don't want it to authorize? I don't want it to buy things randomly just because I'm looking at it. Well, if you've actually used an iPhone with Face ID for you, you know that whenever you make a purchase, you have to double tap the side button in order to authorize it. So it is secure. A seamless interaction with your phone to authorize things as if you didn't have any password at all when you actually do is a big deal. It's actually awesome. I'd want that in addition to a capacitive fingerprint scanner on the back. Now, for those of you who are aware of the technology that is needed for a face ID type unlock, you know it needs something called a time of flight sensor. That's the, the scanny stuff. And when you put more sensors on the front of a phone, you know what that means? You need um, some space. On, on the front of your phone. So number seven, what I'd like to not see is that notch. There's tons of drama about it and most people that I've talked to that are not within the tech community, just like everyday people, really aren't bothered by it. But we have to admit, it's not the prettiest thing in the world and it would be nice to not have. So the real question is, is it possible to keep that wide angle selfie camera, which is actually really awesome, the front facing speaker and a time of flight sensor in here without having a giant notch? Samsung could only put one camera up here. I mean, like, there's a second one, but 
it's not really doing much, but they could really only fit cameras up here. There wasn't even a face ID or time of flight sensor up here, which is a bummer. So maybe the best that we can get is a hole punch cutout, which according to some of the rumors, that may be exactly what we're getting. All that means is I'm probably asking and dreaming for way too much, but I'm just sharing what I'd like to see. We'll find out what actually happens. Just don't take away my wide angle selfie camera, Google. I love that thing. <laughs> Number eight, the display, specifically 120 Hertz. If you've ever seen or used a Razer phone or an iPad Pro, that has a 120 Hertz screen and it's amazing. And to be honest, I'm really surprised that we're not seeing more of that in phones for 2019. There's still time, but the animations and smoothness that you experience on a 120 Hertz screen is just mind blowing. And it's really hard to go back to another phone that's just at 60 Hertz. Now, the potential downside about all that is the fact that we really want to have an OLED screen, specifically a Samsung OLED screen. They're the, definitely the best in terms of OLED. The issue though is that I don't know if there is a 120 Hertz OLED screen from Samsung out there. I don't know if it exists. Surely if something like that existed, we would find it in a Samsung phone first, right? Maybe the Note 10. That'd be pretty sweet. So at least um, maybe a brighter screen because this thing is not so great in the sun. Number nine is additional cameras. Now if you've been paying attention to some of the announcements and leaks for Oppo phones, they have a telephoto lens built into their camera phone, which is really a technological and engineering breakthrough. It's like having this in your phone. Like how do you have depth within your phone? Well, they have a prism and it goes this direction. So the zooming axis is different, which is really, really clever. And keep in mind that a physical zoom is way better than a digital zoom. Surely you've seen some of those digital zooms where you get closer and closer and it just becomes this rainy, noisy mess. Well, when you have a physical zoom, it's actually zooming in for real. You have that original image quality within your zoom. None of the fake digital zoom artifacts. And then along with that, I'd love to have an ultra wide camera lens on the back. Since I've been using the Galaxy S10 Plus, I've really enjoyed the ultra wide camera on the back. It's just really convenient. You can get some really neat shots and it's amazing if you're in a small space. You'll notice that the image quality of it is a little bit lacking in comparison to the normal camera. But if we can have a high quality ultra wide lens and a telephoto lens on the Google Pixel 4 and 4XL, that would be incredible. Now, the hardest thing for me is the simplicity of a single lens. You see, it's doing a ton of work with just one lens. There's that dual pixel thing going on there. There's lots of fancy tech to do that. So when you add in another lens, I think engineers would be more inclined to use that for some of that processing. So you may have to have your other lenses uncovered to get that additional quality for any portrait mode. For someone like me who uses moment lenses to get different types of focal lengths, that's a bummer for me because I like putting on the lenses and still retaining the ability to use portrait mode. So whenever you put a moment lens on your phone, you're probably covering up the other built-in lenses on the phone. And then number 10, the biggest one and probably the most shocking one, better software. This is really mind boggling for me because this is the area that I would imagine Google would thrive in. Honestly, I found that the Google Pixel 2 XL had really poor hardware. There are speaker crackle issues, the screen reflects. There's just tons of issues about that. I've covered that extensively, so I know it firsthand, and there are a lot of people who experience it as well. When the Google Pixel 3 and 3 XL came out, the fit and finish on this one was actually way better than the 2 XL, but uh, the, the software sucked. <laughs> in fact, it's been a disaster. You can even see on Android Police's website, there's a giant log of all the bugs and glitches is on the Pixel 3 and 3 XL. The phone freezes, it lags, apps crash, the camera doesn't open or it takes a long time to open or things don't save or it shuts down. Just things taking forever to open and overall bad RAM management. And like we mentioned earlier, some of their software development choices have made audio sound terrible. So I just, I don't understand how Google can screw up their software. That's what they're strongest at and they beefed it this time. I hope they've learned from this generation and they can turn it around. It'd be really nice to have a phone that works properly right from the start and for years to come. Speaking of years, don't spend years building a website. You can build one for free in under two minutes with bookmark.com. Yes, there's a free tier. Did you like that uh, segue? <laughs> bookmark.com allows you to easily make your own website for your business, personal projects, resume, YouTube channel, and more in as little as two minutes with Ada. Ada is an artificial intelligence design assistant that allows you to simply answer a few questions Questions and she'll construct your website for you and it'll have a beautiful modern design and modern features. And yes, it'll look amazing on mobile devices. No need for endless hours trying to figure out how to make a website. Bookmark.com even has a ton of resources for entrepreneurs to help you grow your own business or start that side hustle you've been putting off. Get your website started now on bookmark.com by clicking
clicking the link down below in the description and get 15% off their premium tiers if you sign up through it. Thanks so much Bookmark for sponsoring this video. So what are some of the things that you would like to see in the Google Pixel 4 and 4XL? Go ahead and leave a comment down below and join the This Is Tech Today community Discord chat. We have a channel in there talking about Pixel Watch 2019. It's a lot of fun. We're following all the leaks. Come join us. Link down below in the description as usual. And I have a long-term review of the Google Pixel 3 and 3XL coming up. I have a more informed idea of what this phone is like as opposed to a review that comes out after using it for two weeks. So I think you deserve better. Make sure to hit the bell icon to be notified when I post that video. Thank you, friend, for watching This Is Tech Today, where we talk about the intersection of technology in our everyday lives, in business, and in all things creative. Until next time.